how do you erase data off of a laptop so that it's secure and completely wiped clean? Well, if you are ever considering selling a laptop like I am with this one, or even wiping hard drives or SSDs so that you can resell those or destroy them, watch this first so you do it the right way the first time. Now, since we are talking about data security in this video, you would probably like to know that security does not just end on your device. It's also something to be aware of whenever you browse the internets. That is why Delete Me is sponsoring this episode. If you have ever wandered across a site that allows you to search a database of people, those are data broker sites and they make money off of your data. Plus, it's a huge breach of your own privacy. And the data that they store and make searchable can be used to steal your identity for harassment or stalking or worse. Your name, your home address, your kids' names, email addresses, phone numbers, and more can be found on data broker sites. So Delete Me can search for your information on those sites and send them all opt-out requests for you. And they do it every three months on a reoccurring basis to ensure that your data is wiped if it ever pops up again. I have used Delete Me for years as a paying customer and it is a service that I have been very satisfied with. If you are ready to take action to get your data removed from those sites, hit up joindeleteme.com slash morse code to get access to a special 20% off deal using the code snubs at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash morse code coupon code snubs for 20% off. Now the reason why erasing data off of a laptop is not as easy as just deleting all your files and emptying your trash is because forensic programs do exist and these tools can be used to recover deleted data, not to mention temporary files and metadata might still exist and those may not not ever get deleted whenever you delete files in your operating system. Now I do recommend before securely wiping data that you back up anything important onto a separate hard drive, a USB flash drive, or an SD card. You will run less risk of accidentally deleting the backup drive because you can simply unplug it after you've backed everything up and store it somewhere safe. This includes making sure that you have a backup of any config files or settings for your various programs and also for your operating operating system's license key so that you can use it to reinstall the operating system after wiping the disk if you want to. You can use the built-in tool to erase all of your data and settings off of the operating system, and this is what I always do, but I do take additional steps afterwards too. I don't just stop there. So to use the built-in tools on newer Windows machines, you will find a reset to factory defaults option under Start, Settings, Windows Update, or Update and Security advanced options, recovery, under reset this PC, choose get started and remove everything. I know there's several steps in there, so just take it slow, or you can just go straight to the Windows website. They have a tutorial available there too. Now the classic way that we have deleted data for older machines, think like Windows 7, Vista, even older XP machines, is by using a tool called Derek's Boot and Nuke. Now this tool has been around for a very long time, long before I even started in this career, but it still works for those legacy devices. D-Band for sure, is a tool that can securely wipe data off of your hard drives. It is great for personal use, but it is not recommended for newer solid state drives. This is because SSDs are sometimes not detected by DBAN, but also because SSDs provision data in a very different way than hard drives do, and data that is stored in these spaces on an SSD cannot be overwritten. So for the tech nerds out there, this is called wear leveling, which removes certain sections of a disk from use for decommissioning but those sections still retain the data and DBAN does not overwrite data on those sections. Now, if you want to use DBAN anyway, or if you have older hard drives, you just need to download the ISO file from the DBAN website or SourceForge and burn it onto a flash drive. You can use a tool like Rufus, Unit Bootin, Universal USB Installer, etc. I use Rufus to stick an ISO file onto a flash drive. And it's as simple as choosing the ISO file as the boot selection, choosing which flash drive you want to format and stick it on 
and hitting start. Just make sure that you are choosing the right drive when you do this because it will wipe and format whatever drive letter you choose. So if you accidentally choose the hard drive that your operating system is installed on, then you will be wiping your operating system for the computer that you're currently on. So be very, very careful. Now, while you are backing up your data, go ahead and hit subscribe down below for more tech tutorial style videos like this one. Extract the ISO download file to a USB flash drive that you can boot off of. Now, while your laptop is turned off, and uh, side note, yes, I do say laptop. I don't enunciate my words every single time I do a video. So sometimes you'll hear me say lap, and sometimes you'll hear me say lab. Just deal with it. Okay. I've seen enough comments over the past decade about how I say laptop, so just, just let's just go with it. All right, so while your lap top is turned off, plug in the flash drive, turn the laptop on, and if given the option, choose to boot off the flash drive. If you aren't given the option to boot off the drive, turn off the laptop again, and when you turn it back on, press whichever button your laptop tells you to press to get into the boot options menu. That could be anything between F2, F8, F12, F3, Five. If I don't know specifically which key it is, I'll just press all of them and wait for it to boot into the boot options menu. <laughs> but generally at the bottom of your screen, your laptop will tell you on the screen during the boot up process, which button will get you into that menu. Now from this boot option menu, you can change your booting sequence from the hard drive with the operating system to your flash drive. If you see a boot mode option, and it lets you choose between UEFI or UEFI or legacy and BIOS, switch over to the legacy BIOS option, which can also affect the boot priority list. Some newer laptops will override your flash drive booting option, even if you set it as priority first, if they are set up in the UEFI or UEFI boot mode. UEFI is better for security and it is newer, but when it comes to using DBAN or similar tools, this is just a little life hack that I learned a long time ago is switching it over to BIOS or legacy. So DBAN is relatively simple to use. I generally just set mine up to auto nuke and I let it run through the nuking process. If you do intend to sell this to a stranger or if it had proprietary information on it, you may want to look through the other options in DBAN's menu and choose something that is a little bit more secure or does more wipes. One once it is done, and this might take a long while, everything is wiped from the laptop, including the operating system. Windows makes reinstallation files that you can add to a separate USB flash drive, and then you can reinstall the operating system. Now here's the problem with DBAN. DBAN has not been maintained in years, so if you are worried about support and you want a newer tool, Let's look at Shred OS. Now Shred OS is currently maintained and you can support this open source project via their buy me a coffee link. Shred OS is like the older brother of DBAN. It looks and acts exactly the same, but it does support UEFI and BIOS booting and it has support for newer systems, including SSDs and NVMe drives. Now while Shred OS will detect newer drives, it is important to note that an SSD is still going to work the same way as I explained earlier and neither DBAN or Shred OS will 100% securely wipe all data off an SSD. And since this is the case, the only real secure way to wipe data off of a newer drive is to use full disk encryption on the drive, then erase the encryption key, thereby securely wiping the data that was encrypted. Now, another option is to use the SSD manufacturer's tool or utility to securely erase the drive, which takes advantage of a command called the ATA Secure Erase command which applies a voltage spike to flash memory blocks all at the same time. The drive utility or tool for your SSD's brand are generally found on that brand's website under the download section. The third option for securely erasing an SSD is using your UEFI BIOS menu. In this case, you will need to boot into the menu, then search for something that says secure erase option. Of course, if you really want to destroy all the data on that drive, use one of these tools, then take it out, then hammer it to bits and drill some holes in it, stick a magnet on it, but that only works for hard disk drives, not SSDs, and then run it through a commercial shredder. You will never be able to use it again, but your data won't be easily recovered. So there's that. Now, even though none of these options are going to be the utmost secure, best 100%, all your data is erased option, 
any of these is going to be better than nothing, especially if you are selling your device to a stranger. I am curious how you delete data off of devices, so sound off in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye, y'all. Do we have a power drill?